Hey, how are you, YouTube? Uh, this is going to be a video and it's going to be uh, my history of gaming. Uh, I see there's a few videos up. Um, I think that, I believe this was started from as a Protaku E2. But the videos that I saw was a uh, Mark V here and then I just watched um, Thomas3120. And um, so I thought I would do a wee video about my gaming history. And it's very, very similar to Mark V. Hears and Thomas3120. Um, I know that Mark V. Hears is just a couple of years older than me, so you know, we're the same generation. I've not checked in Thomas3120, but I believe he's probably the same, so you know, we're all part of the same generation. So it's very, very similar. Um, you know, our gaming history. Um, so I wrote a few I mean, dates down here and, you know, some of the systems. Okay, so I was born in 1972. And the earliest um, that mine can go back to is the Atari 2600. And if I had one, my friend had one, um, I used to stay over at his house, you know, regular every weekend nearly, and he had one. Um, so that's my earliest memory of, you know, extensively playing a, a console. Um, he had Asteroids, um, which I couldn't play at all. I mean, I could play it, but my friend, it was his, and he would um, have the high scores. Uh, he had Asteroids on one cart, and on another cartridge you had a uh, Combat, uh, which was, you know, you can play different variations of the, the tank game. Um, so you can have different settings that. So that's what I remember playing. And I reckon that must have been about 1980, the early 80s anyway. Um, my first console that we had, you know, me and my brother, was the Philips G7000. Um, I remember, because of the religion my mum was, you know, we never got Christmases or birthdays and that, but I do remember my mother saying that we could get something. Um, and I should have just went to the Atari, but not knowing when you were, you know, 10, 11, 12 year old, and I, looked, I remember looking through the catalogue and the Philips G7000 had a keyboard with it, well, you know, it was a touch keyboard, and I remember picking that simply because I thought the keyboard looked cool. Um, so that was what we got, we got, there was two games of well, there was one cartridge that came with it, but there was two games on it, there was a, a shooting game, uh, one was a submarine and one was a ship, and you had to shoot each other, so it was a two player game. Another game on it was a variation of combat. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but it was basically exactly the same. You had two tanks and you could have different variations of that game on it. Um, and my mother never ever bought any other games after that. Um, money constraints and that. So, you know, we played day two games to death. Um, so... After that, we're talking about 1986, I was um, 13, 14, my mother uh, married again and well, we were lucky in the sense that he had a Spectrum Plus and, um, and he had you know over a hundred games for it, but he had played them all and they were just sitting in the, the wee study. So me and my brother, we were given this. So we were given a Spectrum Plus, which we were wanting. That's what we were, and we were trying to save up to buy was a Spectrum Plus because you know, at school at that time, you know, just like how Mark V here and Thomas said, everybody had a Spectrum or a Commodore. And then the very, it was a very. I mean, we had to add one person at school who had a, an Amstrad, um, but you know, it was a Spectrum and a Commodore. And so we were wanting a, a Spectrum, and then you know, we all met some days. We ended up getting mad and here Spectrum are over 100 games that me and my brother got. So that was just amazing because we had the Spectrum Plus and we had all these games already. They're sitting so it took us ages to go through all these games. Um, you know, and I remember playing games like Hungry Horus, Jet Set Willy, uh, Manic Miner. Um, and one of the games that we played, I bought a baseball game, Hardball 3, and me and my brother played that all the time. I thought it was the most amazing game ever. And I also remember playing The Hobbit which was a Tex adventure, role playing adventure, I don't know what you'd call it, but you know, I remember you having to go north, go west, all that kind of stuff. Um, and also he had 
my stepdad, he had just bought the, a new computer, and that's why the Spectrum was, you know, given to us. But he had just bought the Atari ST, and it was a 1040 model. And he had a couple of games for it. And um, so we, you know, I was able to play these games. One was a space adventure game, and um, and he also had Guilds of Guilds of Thieves, which was a, again a text adventure game. I remember playing that. I remember not getting very far in it, but I do remember playing that. And in later years, as um, you know, they were able to. Um, we went to a friend's house. And he had an Atari ST, but it was a 520 model, but his dad was able to get, you know, copies of games on discs. Um, you know, pirated games. So, you know, I managed to play all the other games that, you know, California games, other games that were ported over for other systems. They weren't designed specifically for the Atari ST, but, you know, California games, Bomb Jack, and um, Kickoff, Super Kickoff and Kickoff 2 that I played continuously for years after that on um, the Atari ST. 